Hi everyone, it is B. Welcome to my channel, Psychic Sounds by B. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this particular reading is to go over Saturn Station Direct, all right? And um, it goes direct tomorrow. Uh, today is uh, the 18th. So I want to let you know it's September 18th, 2019. Um, I will make sure that I am very clear with the messages that I'm about to give you. Uh, these are going to be Psychic Astros. So I just want to let you know there's not going to be any tarot or anything like that. However, I did get some psychic downloads, so I will mention those as well. Thank you so much for all your likes, your shares, and your subscribes. I certainly appreciate it. And for those of you that would like to subscribe to my channel or a subscription to my website, you can go to the link below. All right, so thank you so very much for this. Also, guys, in last week's reading, I mentioned something about independence. And I stated that at the New Moon video, I would mention... Um, this note that I wanted to bring forward regarding independence. Well, here it is. <laughs> Go USA, right? Okay, guys, it's Constitution Week here in the United States of America. Fly those flags high and proud. Uh, the Constitution is currently under attack right now and just want to let people know it's there for a reason. And for many of us out there, we know how tyranny starts. And it starts with literally dismantling the Constitution of the United States. It has stood the test of time and it deserves that respect. Also, for those of you out there, I mean, and everybody, if you don't like it, you have an absolute right. I mean, that's what's so great about the Constitution. You have a right to free speech unlike other places in, in uh, the world. Uh, but anyway, uh, just letting you guys know about that. Uh, the Constitution week was um, initiated or started or put into place by the Daughters of the American Revolution. All right, guys, so let's go ahead, and this is interesting, when I said the Daughters of the American Revolution, my phone just lit up, and I have no clue why that just happened. But anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Saturn Station Direct, September 19th of 2019 at 13 degrees of Capricorn. It is definitely going direct now. Um, this is going to be a mixed bag, ladies and gentlemen. I have about four pages of notes here. Of course, I have everything way large, so I don't have to worry about wearing my glasses. I have these, this text really, really large. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, so I will give the houses uh, for the rising moon and the sun, but this will be likely very, very general. Okay, so what does that mean? The sun, moon, and the rising, I'll give you those houses, all right? But the thing is, this is just going to be a general type of energy in those houses. What you really need to check on is to find out where 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn exists in your natal chart, okay? So let's just say you're a Gemini, all right? Let's say you are a 15 degree Gemini rising right? So your eighth house is likely going to exist in Capricorn. So your eighth house is going to be affected the most by this Saturn going direct. But again, I will give you everything. I will focus on the, you know, the surface stuff, but then I'm also going to get very deep. So I want you guys uh, to pay attention and be aware of what it is I'm saying here. Okay. So this is where you are going to be hit. Anything between 8 and 18 degrees in your natal chart, even if you have a planet, say you've got Venus in Gemini, Venus in Aries, okay? If it's between 8 and 18 degrees, you will get hit because it's going to make an aspect, all right? It's within or. Now, the thing about it is, if, for example, you have a Venus in Taurus, it's a good aspect, right? Because it's supportive. You've got Taurus, you know, um, having supportive aspect with Capricorn. But if you're in a more difficult type of aspect, you can definitely feel a little bit of that difficulty as uh, Saturn goes direct. All right. So what will you be hit with? What will be revealed relative to the karma? Uh, commitment, money, hierarchy, boundaries, banks, stoicism, depression, righteous indignation, career, and status. What you will see, or more importantly, uh, what you will now see is that you are going to see what you have sown. 
with whatever action you took, good, bad, right, wrong, and different, you're going to see what you have sown over the last past five months, okay? Since April 29th, because that's when it's stationed retrograde. So, yep, yep, that, that's right. These scenarios will be codified regarding the same people or events that possibly will repeat, okay? Either with different people, same scenario, or the same people. So whatever happened between April 29th and now, those lessons are going to be repeated or karma will be delivered regarding the actions or the inactions that people took, right? And I reminded everybody as, as far back as I could, stay in your integrity, stay in your honor, stay, you know, on the, on the high ground, right? Like, don't, you don't lie, don't be superficial. It's so very, very important right now because now this is where the chickens come home to roost, okay? So just be aware of that. So these could be people that you dealt with that are now coming back in, or these could be um, scenarios or events that have a striking resemblance to what you went through possibly with someone else. So these are what are called cycles. I mean, this is what this all entails. Approximately five to 10 days after the direct motion of Saturn, you will be confronted with events to determine if you learned your lesson. The timeline is now sealed. We have 24 hours and ticking, all right? There's no going back here. Whatever decision was made, if you didn't correct it, if somebody else didn't correct it, this guilt, this joy for some of you, this new beginning, whatever it is, is going to stick with you with a committed energy for the next 12 years, all right? So you must move on and continue to work towards respecting your new timeline. So let's say, for example, you stood in your integrity, you stood up for yourself and you stopped being a pushover. You can't, that's not just a one-time episode. You got you to gotta hold that energy for the next 12 years, all right? So be aware of that. It can get tricky sometimes. I don't know why my laptop is doing this number with, I don't know, maybe my energy is just off the charts. Who knows? Um, anyway, so when we do this, so when we think about the new timeline, this is all about the personal transformation, right? Because anytime planets go uh, retrograde, that energy is put like literally on the inside, right? So it's bubbling on the inside, okay? And then when they start going direct, especially Saturn, when they start going direct, that's when all of these types of energies kind of come out to the surface and they now need to be addressed because now, because you've changed on the inside, now you've got everything on the outside that's being attracted to you just because like attracts like, right? So that's how that's working. So just want to make you guys aware of that, okay? All right. So if you didn't change or you, you stayed in a timeline where you feel stuck or you didn't move or whatever, then you're just going to keep attracting that, right? Because this is now, this internal uh, change, so... They're telling me to explain this to you more, and I don't know why. Maybe some of you aren't getting it, right? When, when the planets go retrograde, it is a contract that we have with these planets that we now have to change something inside, right? Or we have to recognize something or address something. So this whole time, all these planets are retrograde, we're on the inside, we're reconfiguring everything, like, okay, maybe that blue thing needs to go over there and that red thing needs to go over there and that gray thing needs to go up there and that black thing needs to go down there and that, you know, brown thing needs to go over there and whatever it is, okay? It could be like however you want to describe it, okay? You're rearranging the crayons, so to speak, right? So instead of having your crayons in a straight line, maybe you have it in two different lines and maybe it's like this, right? So then what happens, and some of them you may have gotten rid of, Okay, so then what happens is once those planets start going direct, all of a sudden that energy 
is like, do, 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 you know, I mean, it's like, it's like looking for a match, looking for a match, looking for a match, boom, found the match. That's what it is. That's what a timeline shift is. That's what an internal timeline shift is. It's when you break apart from those that don't match your energy. And sometimes people that don't match our energy are brought in to help us to learn lessons. And that's notable, right? But for the most part, what happens is when you reconfigure something on the inside, all of a sudden, all of these planets, they have to recode and provide you with whatever abundance is on the inside. So what abundance do you have? Are you standing in your integrity? Do you demand respect? Are you kind? Are you generous? Are you holding on to regrets? Are you in depression? I'm telling you, you want to make sure that your inside is taken care of right now. All right? So how will you know if your timeline is new? Okay? And remember, this is all, remember, Saturn triggers the timeline seal. All right? Events within the timeline are going to happen over a period of phases. Okay, but I'm going to get into that. So how will you know if your timeline is new? Number one, Capricorn people around you have left you. You have left them. Or they have changed in personality or emotions or have stuck up for themselves, possibly through righteous indignation. Okay? So be aware of that. The other thing, money, hierarchy, commitment, karma, hard work, loyalty are the themes in your specific houses and planets affected. So if you see changes in those areas, we're going to another timeline. We're going into a different dimension. All right. The other thing is natal chart location. Planets in that location or sun, moon, rising sign. And those, the sun, moon, and rising sign, like I said, those are going to be less impacted. So you need to go to the house that um, that basically houses or contains, okay, the range of 8 degrees to 18 degrees of Capricorn, all right? So that's what that is. For me, it's my 8th house, okay? So my 8th house is about to get hit, all right? So be aware of that. So then, and that's how you know if you're in a new timeline, all of these areas are going to feel like they're changing, okay, around you or you've changed them, okay? So the phases of karma. So what are the phases of karma? Remember, karma is neither bad nor good. Karma is a return on energy that you have put out, okay? So I don't want to hear anybody talking about karma is not good. I know that, all right? So what I'm saying here is that karma is neither bad nor good. Karma is something that is returned to you because of what you put out there. And remember, this karma is specific because it is now the karma you've created internally that has to now match with the external. Okay, so be aware of that. So how is this going to happen? So the timeline is sealing in 24 hours or less. And then you have about five to 10 days to get used to the new timeline, okay? But after that is when you're going to start to see snippets of the exact timeline that you selected. You're going to see changes. You're going to see different things going on around you. You're going to feel like maybe you're a little bit of a different person, okay? You're going to feel like you're either stronger or weaker, Okay, so depends on the decisions that you chose. I hope that all of you chose exactly the way that you decided to and you are now in your abundance, okay? But not everybody will be feeling that, okay? So on October 4th, if you need these dates and if you need more information, go back to my timeline video. It's, it's, it's right there and you can read it. And you will see that these dates are on there, okay? So October 4th, the chickens come home to roost one by one. So what's going to happen right around October 4th, you're going to see snippets of things kind of come in around you. It's like it could be happening to a friend. It could be happening to a child. It could be happening to a teacher. Something like that, like some 
like karma is being delivered in a very interesting way. It could also be where things recalibrate and they go back to making sense instead of such chaos. Generally, I feel October 4th is going to be the rebalancing of that chaos that has been put out there and now things are going to be more settled and more reasonable, okay, and rational, all right? On November 19th, you are going to start to feel new timelines or experience others stuck in an old timeline. Right around November 19th, you might be dealing with people or you might hear about people that failed to make the changes that they needed to make when they needed to make them. These, you may hear about these people saying, I shouldn't have done that. Or, um, you know, I just wish I could get another chance at that. Or, you know, I let that opportunity pass me by. Okay, so if you hear that, I'll tell you right now, that person is likely stuck in an old timeline. Okay, even though that you might be seeing it from afar, it is still they're they're stuck in their old timeline. And I'm going to say it again. An old timeline and a new timeline doesn't make it good or bad. It just makes it an old timeline versus a new timeline. Okay. So that is what's going to happen. People could come back into your life to face a likely rejection. So what does that mean? When you have lifted yourself up to become the best that you can be, right? And you're getting out of that, you never heard of crabs in a barrel, all right? You're getting out of that barrel and you're, oh no, the other crabs don't want you to go. So they're going to bore, they're going to drag you back in, all right? There are going to be some people that might be coming back to drag you back into the old timeline. But I'm telling you, a lot of people who are awakened are going to be not on my watch. I'm, I am on my new timeline and Bye bye. See you later. I wish you the best, but sorry. I mean, you should have thought about that when you had the time, right? So that's one thing that you will probably see. On December 15th of 2019, any, now this is one is, is pretty significant in the love department. Any wrong love, quote unquote, choice made will now be apparent family, romance, friends, etc. You know, love can exist in so many different ways. But if somebody made a wrong love choice, it's going to be very apparent. And people are going to be feeling great joy with the love that's around them, or they're going to be feeling great depression. December 15th, 16th is that type of a day, okay, where it's like, I mean, it's, it's like this, joy, depression. I mean, there really is no in between, okay? Uh, January 13th of 2020, the whispers of the final nail in the coffin. So this is the biggest karma delivery for good or for bad. Drip, drip, drip. So remember how I talked about last week about the Chinese water torture? It's like drip, drip, drip. And so what's happening here is there are whispers coming through the airwaves, the phone, messages, whatever. And people are like, wow, is that really going to happen? Are we for sure we're ready for this? I'm serious? So this is what's happening. This is where Saturn, because Saturn is going back over what he retrograded. He's going right and he's getting close to Pluto, right? So he's at, what is he at, 13? What did I say? 13 degrees. He's at 13 degrees, Pluto's at 20, okay? So, and this is backwards for those of you looking at this, but okay, so 13 degrees and 20. So he's going forward now, and Pluto's going for forward too, but Pluto's a lot slower than Saturn, okay? So Saturn's gonna start closing in. They are within orb of seven degrees. Be ready for massive transformation transformation. And by the time we hit January, Saturn's going to be within orb. Expect significant karma of the most transformational kind. Okay. On January 23rd, this is the big day. Why? 
because this is when Jupiter is revisiting the location he was in before he went retrograde. Moving in right on over the galactic center. This is where all that potential energy is kept in that galactic center area. Okay. And then once Jupiter goes, and of all planets, Jupiter, really? Okay. <laughs> Jupiter's going over there, boom, 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 boom. And the whole thing is like, whoosh, like this. Can you imagine how crazy it would be with chaos if Jupiter went over the galactic center while Saturn was retrograde? Oh, thank goodness Saturn is direct. That's all I've got to say. All right, because that would have been pure chaos. I mean, that would have been nuts. All right. So January 23rd of 2020, vengefulness, punishment, restriction, great depression for those who have not yet received karma for bad decisions. Others who are in the clear, because not everybody's going to get bad karma. I don't want to scare you. That's not my, that's not what I'm trying to say here. You're going to see it though. Okay. And others who are in the clear, who handled their karma, who've addressed things they will be observing other people go through this. And some nice people might be out there willing to help others, but something is happening at the beginning of January of 2020, and it's almost like people are no longer willing to sacrifice themselves themselves for people who are just going to like use others and you know cheat, lie, deceive, um you know, get a free ride. I mean, what, whatever, whatever type of thing that is. And there we go. Um, so anyway, that's been confirmed. So let's keep moving forward. Um, the signs and houses. So as we move through here, so when I go through all this, these are the energies, especially the energies I talked about right at the beginning. Okay. So I want you all to be aware of that. So I want you to know that the signs and the houses are going to be brought up relative to your, your solar chart, okay, which is going to be very low key, very general, okay? But then if you get into your natal chart where exactly where this 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn is in your natal chart, that is going to tell you the exact house you are going to be affected by. So what energy is going to hit these house planets first? Okay, so the first energy is going to be Venus in Libra, Quincunx, Uranus retrograde Taurus at six degrees. This energy emits the need to adjust or there is a discord that is present and cannot be solved relative to business or personal relationships fairness due to not wanting to change or stubbornness, all right? Clinging on to the past. This may have something to do with holding on to the idea or pushing out a picture, okay? Making it look like everything's just fine, but it's not. So pushing out a picture, okay, of a functional family unit due to needing to keep up with a lie or a facade. So please, don't judge a book by its cover. Some of what would appear the most put together people in the world are completely um, bereft of any um, morality whatsoever. So I just want to make you guys aware of that. It is really in everybody's best interest for everyone to be absolutely true and to tell the truth, no matter if it's good, bad, right, wrong, or indifferent. You do not want to be caught in a lie around this time. You just don't want to. Uh, the second one is Mars and Virgo trining Pluto in Capricorn at 20 degrees. This energy emits a level of support and ease relative to making a case. The details are now being called forward and there is no hiding them. Okay, because people are on, we, I mean, literally everybody is like, they are on fire. They are passionate. They are demanding the truth. Okay. Just demanding it. So also irrationality is not tolerated. 
where sense prevails, where righteous indignation exists, great internal transformation regarding status and career are only a step away. Remember, no lying. If you have lied in status or career, expect karma. So I just want to make you guys aware of that. Now, these are the three alignments that are going to stamp Saturn station direct because on the 19th, these are active. Okay, so I want to make you aware of that. The third alignment is the sun in Virgo Libra cusp. We got a Virgo Libra cusp. A cusp. Cust? Cust. Something about cust? C-U-S-T? Or cost? I almost feel like it's somebody's name, like their last name, cust? I don't know. Anyway, it could be cust. Oh, that might be what it is. And you'll know as we get farther down the, the line here. So, Sun in Virgo, Libra, Cusp, Quintile, North Node in Cancer. This energy makes it very clear that there are areas in your life where you maintain great details. You remember details that mean a lot to you. This may be surrounded by a general theme of justice and fairness. This energy has everything to do with being a leader in these areas. This also stems from family and ancestry. Okay, so I want to make you aware that everybody has a spot in their life that they remember details. Some people, they remember a lot of details with math. Other people remember details of conversations that they have. Some people remember the details of what they saw yesterday or whatever it is. There's something about a level of expertise regarding your own personal detail Rolodex, okay, that is really going to put you in a leadership position, almost like you need to capitalize on it, is kind of the way that I see this. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get into the signs and houses. So if you are a Capricorn, sun, moon, or rising, or if 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn is in your first house, your identity is going to be affected like no tomorrow, okay? You are going to see some massive, massive transformations regarding Capricorns, all right? Massive. And those transformations are basically um, their ruler waking up and saying, all right, Capricorn, have you been good or bad? If you've been a good Capricorn, then you're going to keep on going and you're going to see the fruits of your labor. If you've been a not so good Capricorn, you might be seeing some karma because, you know, you should know better, okay? That's just the way this is. And also, Saturn does rule Aquarius as well. Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, or those of you that will have 8 to 18 degrees um, in Capricorn in your 12th house, this is all about Pisces people. This is all about psychosis, healing, research, hospitals, um, psychic abilities, clandestine affairs, romance, the hidden, the past. So Aquarius, you are going to be affected with this, all right? And for the Capricorns that didn't hear me, you also will be dealing possibly with Aries people as well. So just be aware of that. Uh, pioneering new beginnings, okay? So Pisces, for those of you that you have a sun, moon, or rising in Pisces, or 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your natal chart exists in your 11th house, this is all about hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations, as well as Aquarius people. This is where you are going to have to commit, get loyal, um, deal with hierarchy, uh, money, um, you know, self selfishness in some cases. Um, what else? Emotionlessness. I mean, this is this is what's going on here. So just be aware of that. Aries, a sun, moon, and rising, or if you have 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your 10th house in your natal chart, your 10th house is affected here. This is all about status and career. Aries, for you, you might be dealing with a Capricorn person as well. So that is what is going on here. There's going to be a need for a commitment, for loyalty, for emotionlessness, for for some of you, depression, because Capricorn rules depression, okay? Uh, for others of you out there, uh, this could be uh, putting the work in and building a structure, okay? So that is what's going on for some of you Aries out there. 
So I really hope, Aries, that you are utilizing your uh, 10th house energy well, because if you weren't, then, you know, this goes, this is interesting because this is kind of going back to the last week's reading where we were mentioning that the fire signs, someone may have not been the leader they thought they were, or they had an opportunity to be a leader, but they used their authority in the wrong way. Aries, that might be you, or that might be somebody you know. So just be aware of that. But now that Saturn's going direct, expect karma for the good or for the bad. Taurus and uh, su Taurus sun, moon, rising. And uh, those of you that have uh, 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your ninth house in your needle chart, this is all about um, travel, the occult, foreign people, foreign lands, legal, law. Okay, all of that. This is definitely, definitely coming up here. And you want to be aware that your ninth house is now going to get a lot more strict and a lot more regimented. Uh, then we have uh, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Or for those of you that have 8 to 18 degrees of uh, Capricorn in your 8th house in your natal chart. This is where there is joint finances and intimacy that are in question. This could also be jealousy, uh, passion as well, Geminis. This is where you need to get a little bit of a, a handle on what it is that you're putting out there regarding your eighth house. So be aware of that. Uh, cancer for you, sun, moon, and rising, or if you have eight to 18 degrees, of Capricorn in your seventh house in your natal chart. This is all about romantic partnerships and business partnerships. You're going to have to get real here. You're going to have to commit. You're going to have to do the hard work. Okay. There's no more, no more fooling around. You know, Saturn is now going direct in your seventh house. And this is all about other people. This is about your, the people that you love, the people that is, that are outside of you, the other Okay, they are going to be very demanding and they are going to expect excellence. Leo, sun, moon, and rising, or for those of you that have uh, the 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your sixth house in your natal chart, this is all about health, well-being, service to others, Virgo people. Okay, so this is definitely coming up here, Leos, where you are going to need to get a little bit more regimented and you're going to be, need to be a little bit more dedicated to your sixth house activities. Virgo for you, uh, sun, moon, and rising, or if you have H to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your fifth house in your natal chart. This is all about romance, children, and creativity. This is about Leo people as well. So for you, you might be uh, finding out that these particular areas of your life are gonna require some level of commitment, loyalty, or um, some level of I'm hearing a word. Hold on. Wow. Back it up. Whatever you put out there, Virgo, you better be able to back it up. That's, or you're telling somebody, like, back it up, you know? So that could be going on for some of you Virgos out there. Libra, sun, moon, and rising, or for those of you that have 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your fourth house in your natal chart, this is all about home and family. So your home and family is going to need to get a little bit more regimented, a little bit more put together, get rid of the chaos and make more sense and start, you know, running everything a little bit more rationally. Uh, that's coming up. For those of you out there that are Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, or you have the 8 to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your third house in your natal chart, this is all about communications, negotiations, siblings, okay, social media, contracts, negotiations, all of that, okay? Short distance travel, like I said, all of that, the neighborhood as well, all of that is going to be in this particular area uh, of your life. And this is something that you really need to look at because you need to be a little bit more regimented. You need to get yourself on a schedule, okay? Because that is what is coming up here. You need to be a little bit clearer regarding your communication and try to be a little bit more rational and a little less emotional, okay? Sagittarius for you, uh, this is going to be in your second house. And for those of you that have eight to 18 degrees of Capricorn in your second house, in your natal chart, this is all about self-value. This is all about um, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, 
The second house is also ruled by Taurus. So Sagittarius, you might be dealing with a Taurus or someone with Taurus tendencies. Okay, so Taurus in their chart. But that is definitely what is coming up here. Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual planets. And I'm almost done. This is good. This is going to be about 40 minutes. I'm excited. Okay, so these are how your planets are affected. Okay, so what does that mean? If you have a Venus in Taurus at 10 degrees, you are going to get a direct trine from a direct Saturn, which is a very supportive aspect, all right? But when you put these two together, because you've got Venus, that's a, a, a benefic, and then you've got Saturn, that's a malefic, right? So who's going to win out here? Who do you think is going to win out? I can give you two guesses. So these are the planets, how the planets are going to be affected by Saturn when they are in aspect to Saturn, okay? So you have to find out if your planet that I'm mentioning here, you've got to find out how that is aspecting Saturn, okay? There's trines, there's, you know, um, sextiles, there's oppositions, all right? So be aware of that. Like cancers, for you, it would be an opposition, all right? If you've got a planet in cancer, you've got an opposition if it's between 8 and 18 degrees um, in cancer because it's going to oppose the Saturn going direct in Capricorn. So what is going to happen relative to how these planets are going to be effective when they're in aspect to Capricorn. Well, Neptune, and this is the thing. Remember when I said cust, right? C-U-S-T? I think they meant C-U-S-S-E-D, cust. Because when I was writing these down, I was actually swearing. And sometimes when they ask me to swear, I'll swear. This isn't bad, okay? But they literally, like Saturn just wants to make it very clear. And for some reason, swearing came in. And normally I don't, so please, if anybody has children around, please make sure, and you don't want them to hear this, you know, put your children someplace else, okay, because I, there is some swearing here, and maybe I will, you know, just kind of maybe spell it out a little bit, or maybe change the word a little bit. Okay, so Neptune, no more dreaming, no more frivolity, get to work. Use Neptune creativity and psychic abilities to make money. So if you have a planet between 8 and 18 degrees, this is the message, this is the energy that that planet is going to be carrying. This is what this planet is going to be requiring you to do in that particular house under that aspect that it's in. Guys, this can get really detailed, all right? But generally, you're going to feel that. So I would say if you don't want to do the research, find out where your Neptune is. If your Neptune is between 8 and 18 degrees, you're aspected. And find out what house it's in. And these are the energies you're going to be experiencing in that house. Okay, Venus. You need to SH eat or get off the pot. I also heard that phrase that I've used before a couple times. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I came in again. Sorry. Are you in or are you out? So when Saturn is bumped up against Venus, usually Saturn wins out. And Saturn is going to make Venus demand respect in love and in money. So be aware of that. What is going to happen if you've got Mercury between 8 and 18 degrees in your natal chart? Shore up your communication, commit to contracts and negotiations, get her done, get communication boundaries up. You cannot talk to me that way. Respect my authority, all right? So you've got something going on here if your Mercury is in this area where Mercury is going to be giving off this type of energy in that whatever house it is for you. Jupiter, when aspected to Saturn, Stop frivolously spending money you don't have. Spend within your means. Get a budget together. Stop giving more than you are getting. Hold people accountable. Okay? Be aware of that. Where is Jupiter in your natal chart? 
Is it at um, nine degrees of, of Libra? Well, if it's at nine degrees of Libra, where's nine degrees of Libra in your natal chart? Oh, it's in your fourth house. Okay, your fourth house is going to have this Jupiter aspect Saturn energy. Okay. All right, Uranus. What happens when Uranus aspects Saturn? Are you sure you want to do that? Guys, remember, when, when I connect with planets, when I talk with planets, it's like they have personalities. And um, I'm actually writing a book about that. So um, they talk to each other. And so these guys are having a conversation, right? And Saturn just woke up and Saturn's like checking out like the friends or the work colleagues or whatever. And now he's, he's got his coffee and he's walking. He's a little bit sleepy, but he's walking around and he's like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> so he's going up to Venus. He's going up to Mercury and he's giving him a little bit of a message. Okay. Since you've been gone. There's something about... Um, since you've been gone, I think that's by, who is that? Kelly, Kelly Clarkson, is that it? That song may be of significance for some people out there since you've been gone. Okay, so Uranus anyway, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting off topic here. Uranus, when aspected to Saturn, are you sure you want to do that? I don't like surprises. All right, then if you have Pluto between 8 and 18 degrees anywhere in your chart, in your chart, Slow and steady wins the race to secure lasting change. No more hidden affairs. No more sexual immorality. Somebody's getting caught. So if you've got Pluto between 8 and 18 degrees and you have either been immoral or doing something under the surface or whatever, and it's a bad aspect to Saturn, I guarantee you someone's getting caught here. What happens when the sun is aspected with Saturn? Be very careful with what you share with others. Prior actions regarding lies or fibs relative to your identity now reap karma. So if you pretended to be somebody you weren't, or you were trying to cover something up, or you were saying that I didn't lie, but you did lie, or whatever, here comes the karma, all right? And your identity will be affected, okay? The moon, what happens when the moon is aspecting Saturn? Stop being so emotional. To receive, you have to get your butt off the couch. Okay? So remember, this is Saturn with his cup of coffee. He's going down the hallway with lined with cubicles or offices, and he's knocking on sun's door, and he's saying to the sun, okay, here's your message. Now he's walking over to the moon's office. Hey, moon, open up the door. Moon's open up in the door, is opening up the door. Hey, I didn't know you were going to be back so early. And Saturn's like, stop being so emotional. If you want people to respect you, if you want more money, if you want people to love you, get your butt up off the couch and make it happen. It's not just going to be handed to you on a silver platter, right? So that's what Saturn's saying to the moon. And then we've got Mars. So Saturn, you know, goes up to the office, knocks on the door. Hey, Mars, what's up? Mars like, hey, dude, what's up? Just got done working out. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so this is the message Saturn has for Mars. Count to 10 before losing your crap. But do not take the heat for anyone else and make sure if you are in the right, defend yourself. Respect my authority. That came up again. So be aware of that, all right? But you got to be really diplomatic when you're doing that. If you've got Mars between 8 and 18 degrees, you got to be diplomatic in whatever house that resides in for you. Last but not least, if your Saturn is aspecting your Saturn, whoa, whoa. If you have Saturn between 8 and 18 degrees in aspect with your natal chart, you may, you may, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say all of you are going to do it. You may, you may have massive depression, constriction, and emotionlessness, restriction, a commitment you regret, but now you are stuck with it. 
So you may have gotten into a commitment because it made you look good. It was all about the Joneses. It was all about what was out there and whether or not you had the best of this, the best of that. Maybe you, um, maybe you wanted to have your cake and eat it too. All of that, okay? This is where it's coming home to roost. So be aware of that. This is also Saturn going up to Saturn and saying, if you are in massive de de depression, emotionlessness, feel like you're nothing, Saturn is going to Saturn and saying, buck up, buttercup, pick yourself up by those bootstraps, get out there and make it happen. There's no use of you sulking or worrying or fearing anything because if you don't change yourself, then nothing's going to happen. You're going to be stuck here in five years. You're going to be stuck here for another 12 years. Get up and get moving. Let's do this. Get out and mow the lawn. Just get her done, okay? So this is what's going on here. And a lot of people who have the Saturn in this area, if you've been getting pushed around by people, I can tell you right now, you are going to be saying, you will respect my authority. And that, and they will. They will, because it will be unmistakable, Okay? There could be some level of oppression and blocked energy as well. All right, guys, I hope you liked that. Um... Oh, wait, I have more. <laughs> I forgot about the psychic downloads. So, so guys, when I was, um, I was putting on my hat and I was, you know, talking about, okay, I'm going to, you know, mention Constitution Week or whatever. And all of these downloads came in and I had to grab actually a piece of paper and write all this down. And these are extremely strange. Some of you may know what these mean. I don't. I mean, I have an idea, but they may mean more to you than they mean to me at the present point in time. So let's just go ahead and work through this right now. There are about five or about four. Yeah, for about that, yeah, there's about four. Okay, because I had I had number five written here, but don't worry about that. Okay. The first phrase I got out of the blue was release the Kraken. Now, I know that uh, Clash of the Titans, um, I believe, there was um, a character in there that said release the Kraken, I believe. But that could be something going on with some of you out there. And then I got the following. A wave with the power of a thousand suns. And I wrote suns, S-U-N-S, -S, right? With the, with the power of a thousand suns. But they said, no, that wasn't it. It was S-O-N-S, -S, suns. Like male at birth, the father. That is my son, okay? A wave with the power of a thousand suns will destroy that which is not real and illuminate that which is. That one was interesting. The other one I got is that we must be awakened to our ignorance. And I will put the phrases below so that you guys can see them. Okay, this last one was weird. For every 20, there is only three. Activation and formation commences. So that's what I've got, guys. Um, it just came in that way. And so if any of those phrases make sense to you at all, or if you think that you can find a connection with those phrases, please let me know. Okay, I wish all of you the best, much light, much love, and many blessings. And remember, this energy lasts until January 23rd. Take care of yourselves. Namaste.